concurrent chemotherapy and radiation therapy, or CRT, is recommended for patients with stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer that cannot be removed with surgery. It is important for patients to be treated according to recommended standard of care because it may give them the best outcome. It's important for radiation oncologists to make use of all the available technology when treating stage 3 lung cancer. It's important that every patient is simulated with a 4D CT in order to account for tumor motion. It's important also that you use image-guided radiation therapy, or IGRT, in order to potentially reduce your margins that you're using for your radiation planning volumes and to make sure that the patient is aligned properly with every treatment that they receive. By using all these technologies, we can really deliver the best treatment to our patients with the least amount of toxicity. During radiation therapy of non-small cell carcinoma, we we'll use PET-CT imaging to help us to contour the growth tumor. It is crucial to contour the growth tumor value and clinic tumor target value precisely. In addition to that, based on what kind of technology you use for imaging guidance, we need to design the planning target value to minimize dose exposure in the meantime, deliver adequate dose to the target. For radiation therapy, particularly intensity modulated radiation therapy of lung cancer, it is different compared with IMRT for breast or prostate. For lung cancer, because its unique position, it has a heart, esophagus, spinal cord, and a lung. When we design the definitive radiation therapy for lung cancer, it is very crucial for dosimetrists to design radiation therapy to deliver definitive dose to the target. In the meantime, choose the angle and intensity properly to avoid critical structure. All those critical structures have a different tolerance for radiation therapy. Therefore, when we design radiation therapy using intensity modulated radiation therapy, we needed to take all those facts into consideration. Learning curve is expected, and we believe that training is necessary. For lung cancer radiation therapy, a few critical organs we should consider. For example, the lung, esophagus, the heart. When we design radiation therapy, if the tumor is close to esophagus, we need to minimize dose to esophagus, particularly avoid irradiated whole esophagus with full dose. So here we consider the mediastinal lymph node stations. Level 1 here shows the supraclavicular lymph nodes that are located above the clavicle. Lymph nodes in this region can be at times difficult to contour. It's always helpful to have a PET-CT scan to adequately define the volume of the lymph node involved. When treating these supraclavicular lymph nodes to the full radiation dose, you have to be cognizant of the brachial plexus. It's important to contour that structure and make sure that you're not going above a maximum point dose of 66 gray. Moving down, you can see the mediastinal nodal stations, levels two and levels four. These are paratracheal lymph nodes. The dividing point between two and four is the aortic arch. Moving further down, you can see station seven, the subcarinal lymph node station. When bulky lymph nodes exist in the subcarinal lymph node station, you're inevitably going to have more of the esophagus within your radiation field. Whenever I have subcarinal disease, I'm very cognizant of the risk of esophagitis in my patient, and I'm a little bit more proactive in prescribing medications that can help with esophagitis. So the level 5 lymph node stations, the AP window, and the level 6, the periaortic lymph node stations, are most commonly involved with left-sided tumors. Importantly, levels 5 and 6 are impossible to access with a mediastinoscopy and very difficult to access with an EBUS. A chamber lymph procedure can be used to stage these nodal stations. Another way to get at these nodal stations is through a thoracoscopic VATS procedure. Your surgeon can perform a biopsy of these nodal stations with a VATS procedure. Moving on, stations eight and nine, these are paraesophageal and pulmonary ligament lymph nodes. Again, the main thing to consider here is that you will inevitably be giving a bigger dose to the esophagus when you have disease involvement in these stations. However, it's relatively rare for a stage three lung cancer to have levels eight and nine involved.
radiation has advanced significantly over the years. The treatment method, outcome, and the side effect look different now than they used to, with the improvement of technology for lung cancer treatment. For stage 3B or even C, non-small cell lung cancer, it still can be treated with standard concurrent chemo and radiation therapy 